Chapter 11, Lecture 4, The Uninsured and the Affordable Care Act. Uh, in the previous lecture, you learned about the market structure of the insurance industry and you learned about the conduct uh, of the uh, insurance industry uh, by pricing behavior. You also learned about the performance of the insurance industry based on the allocation uh, of efficiency and equity. In this lecture, you will learn about the performance of the insurance industry based on the level of the production. And how do we estimate the level of production in the insurance, um, health insurance in the United States, um, producing at the optimal amount of output is another measure of the performance of an industry where the marginal social benefit is equal to marginal social cost. What is the optimal amount of, how do we uh, basically, what is the index for estimating the optimal amount of output is based on right number of the insured. So um, we have to look at basically the number of the people are uh, uninsured in the United States and insured. Advocates of the universal health insurance coverage in the United States believe that the marginal social benefit is greater than marginal social cost at all levels of production. Um, but uh, let's see what is included in the private health insurance coverage includes all the supplemental comprehensive and catastrophic insurance policies, including those individually purchased both by non-elderly and elderly and group policies sponsored by uh, employers or uh, trade associations. Now, when we say that elderly, uh, yes, elderly uh, older than 65, uh, they have uh, Medicare, but they still Medicare doesn't cover all the services they need, such as, for example, dental, mental, uh, etc. So uh, most of the uh, elderly, uh, older than older than 65, still they have uh, private health insurance, which called which is called Medicare. Now this chart basically shows the um, the people with private health insurance coverage. Uh, between uh, years of 1940s to 2010. So the number of the percentage of the population with health insurance, with uh, private health insurance, increased over the time and peaked at 76.3% uh, uh, um, uh, in the middle of the uh, 1970s and then decreased after that. Um, so we wanted to know uh, the reasons for decline in private health insurance. The first reason is the growing percentage of the population aged six, uh, 65 years and older. But remember that that couldn't be the only factor because most of the elderly in the United States, they have Medicap uh, coverage from the private health insurance anyway. The second reason is the rising health insurance premium which uh, you uh, saw the graph in the previous uh, lecture. And the third reason is the occupational shifts from uh, traditionally manufacturing sectors job, which was high risk um, to the lower coverage uh, services sectors jobs. Uh, most of the jobs these days are behind the computer basically. The fourth reason uh, for decline in the private health insurance is a growing fraction of the people covered by Medicaid and um, so um, over the past few years. Um, who are they in uninsured? Um, in, the in, in the United States in 2010, about 14 to 16 percent of population uh, reported that they uh, have no health insurance. Um, and remember that um, in the first uh, slides of this chapter, you uh, saw the um, combination of the basically health, uh, the type, different types of health insurance. And remember that employment related insurance is the dominant type of private health insurance coverage in the United States by over like 57% of for non elderly. So, therefore, uh, we have to look at the um, 
basically the reason for uh, wh who are uninsured um, basically related to the to their job um, so when we are looking at the type of the uninsured we can categorize them in three uh, categories frictional uninsurance uh, or the uh, a person terminates one job that offered health insurance and is searching for another job is structurally uninsured uh, because of the chronic illnesses uh, they have a pre-existing pre condition um, and uh, employment uh, and uh, employment uh, that does not offer basic that health insurance coverage for their pre-existing condition and or uh, basically because of the insufficient income to cover their uh, condition and the cyclical in insurance is the uh, change insurance status as they shift in and out of the jobs offering group health insurance benefits so basically as the macro economy normally expands and contrasts in the short run uh, there are uh, a, f a few percentage uh, always in our economy they have um, their cyclically uh, cyclical unemployment and therefore they are cyclical uh, uninsured um, so basically these three types of the uh, uninsurance are exactly uh, the same three types of unemployment we have in our economy so we have three types of uh, usual unemployment uh, frictional unemployment structural unemployment and cyclical unemployment and the point here is that the problem with the uh, uninsurance in our country is that because they are attached to the job and as they uh, become without job or move from job to job or uh, because of the termination in their job or when they are sick basically they're uh, temporarily out of job they are um, basically uninsured so job lock is the problem disadvantage of the employment employer sponsored group health insurance um, and if you wanted to look at the uh, age range for those people that are without uh, insurance you see that mostly they are between the age of 19 to 54 and they are basically very young or even like um, uh, those people older um, they're before six, uh, 64 so it's 12 persons are uh, in this range and then of course the smaller percentage is between uh, below the age 18 so if we look at the based on the family income of course they are uh, poor and uh, mostly uh, they are below the federal poverty uh, limit here um, we have the um, percentage of the uninsured based on the state and then um, we have the distribution of the non-elderly uninsured uh, based on the federal poverty level so I just leave them to go uh, to uh, let you to go and check the website um, the consequence of being uninsured is that research demonstrate that the uninsured people they use fewer preventive and screening services and they are sicker when diagnosed and they received fewer therapeutic uh, uh, services and they have poorer health outcomes and they have lower annual earning because of the poorer health now the if we look at the relationship between uninsured and ed visit on average the national data shows that 50 percent of the emergency department visits are non-urgent or primary um, care related uh, visit that could be actually um, be solved by uh, visiting the primary uh, doctor which is much cheaper than going to the ED visit Miller estimates that the dollar value of the health foregone because of the uninsurance is between 65 and 130 billion dollar per year the output again we are looking at the level of output or optimal amount of production or number of the insured 
the output of the private health insurance in the United States, um, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, uh, we call HIPAA of 1996, makes it uh, more difficult for the health insurers to basically uh, cherry pick the uh, people segment insurance risk goals and deny or uh, basically uh, revoke the access to a specific uh, individuals or group on the basis of health status uh, uh, for those people they have um, basically prior type of illnesses and HIPAA created the first national standard uh, for availability and portability of the group and individual health insurance coverage. So in that case, uh, if the people, uh, they lose their jobs, they still, they can actually have uh, insurance uh, between two jobs. The major provisions of the act as they relate to the health insurance industry focus on the uh, guaranteeing access and renewability of the health insurance and making health insurance more portable. Now, the major provisions to health insurance industry are the guaranteed access and renewability and portability. Um, so, if you wanted to look at the uh, operating profit margins of the some major insurers from 2000 and 2010, uh, you can see that uh, basically there was an increase in most of the years in their profit up to the uh, year 2010, and there was a decrease after 2010 in uh, most of the insurance, uh, in uh, private insurance. The Affordable Care Act, um, uh, basically the number of the provisions in the Affordable Care Act relating to the health insurance industry um, is, um, uh, based on the uh, insurance mandates. Um, uh, so um, the insurance mandates require that an insurance company or health plan covers a specific benefits healthcare providers or uh, patient populations. So uh, there is a minimum medical loss uh, ratio requirements that they have to follow and the health insurance exchange also uh, uh, is another um, addition in the Affordable Care Act and also the various taxes and subsidies to help those people they can afford their premium um, and of course there is a penalty if they don't uh, the people they don't uh, uh, basically uh, have um, they don't have the health insurance to encourage the people motivate uh, the people to have the insurance and if they cannot afford they can uh, get uh, subsidies so the affordable care act essentially transforming the private health insurance industry into the federally regulated entity uh, if basically can survive of course um, the affordable care act requires the health insurance companies to set the community rated premium in a set of experience rating and uh, provide the first dollar preventive care coverage, uh, which means that uh, basically there is no co-payment for the preventive care coverage. So some provisions of the Affordable Care Act designed to enhance the efficient uh, operation of the health insurance industry. Um, finally, I found the, uh, this article, basically the article linked to uh, for the current pra practice, it shows that the ho hospital could kill the health insurance industry by cutting out the middleman. So the article linked uh, below uh, talks about the recent trend of hospital entering into the insurance market by selling their own plans. So this could be a good uh, news and also could be a bad news because uh, hospitals are already actually uh, very concentrated, uh, so uh, they have a power, market power. So while there could be a benefit gain from the reduction of middleman fees, this would give hospitals additional power over the prices, which are already difficult to obtain. And 
So the other thing is a lack of transparency and ability for hospitals to have monopolistic power over both markets could be a significant issue. This is the end of chapter uh, 11.